Hi, I'm David Cooper from ePianos. If you're deciding between a keyboard or a piano, this is the video for you. Make sure you're signed up to receive our weekly emails with news and reviews and more videos like this as well as special offers. And make sure you check out our huge selection of new and used instruments on our website, epianos.co.uk. So today I want to help you decide whether to buy a keyboard or a digital piano and there's plenty to choose from. So this video is here to give you some guidance. So to start off with, if you look at a portable keyboard, they're normally five octaves, 61 notes, and they don't have weighted keys. They have um, just, just lightweight keys like an organ would have. Now that's fine for starting off, but if you're having piano lessons, you're gonna find that you probably want weighted keys. Um, they are portable, they're affordable, and they'll get you started, but you'll grow out of them quite quickly. And especially if you're having real piano lessons. If you have piano lessons with a piano teacher, the chances are that you'll be going to them with a real piano. And the difference between the keys is gonna make it quite hard between your practice every week and playing on the real piano. The real piano keys are much heavier. And that means when you go to play them, your finger muscles and your uh, muscle memory is to be uh, coping with the weight of the keys. And if you're practicing all week on a, a lightweight keyboard, you're gonna notice a big difference. Now, portable pianos can have semi-weighted keys or fully weighted keys. And normally the portable pianos are 88 notes, the same as a full piano keyboard. So you can buy a shorter version. Um, you won't need the full length for the first few years. So it might be that the 73 note version is enough for you. Now on the pianos, you'll get a selection of voices from pianos, harpsichords, electric pianos, organs and strings. Uh, but the big thing about them is the harder you press the note, the louder it will be. And you'll have the resistance to make it feel like a real piano. And you can go to a real piano from one and you'll be familiar with the weight on the keys. If you go to a keyboard, they have a rhythm section as well. And you could use that as your accompaniment and play the instrument much easier than a real piano because the left hand can use the automatic accompaniment built in rather than having to play it properly like a pianist would. Okay, let's get to the instruments now and I'll show you what a pianist might play and how they might use their left hand compared to a keyboard player that might use the automatic section. As you'll see, my left hand is playing separate notes and they're making arpeggios or they're playing chords, but they're playing uh, individual notes sometimes to play along to coordinate with my right hand. This is more of a jazz. So on the jazz, um, we're, we're moving our hands around a bit more as you can see, but it's quite a fun style and um, great on piano. And on the digital pianos, we can mix the piano with the strings and get a nice combination between strings and piano. So the strings continues to linger with the piano dying out. Okay, let's show you on the keyboard now. Now the keyboards have automatic backing, so we can still play them in the same way as I did with the digital pianos, but the main difference is we've got these backings and your chords can stay um, constant. You can just hold down your left hand, either one note chords or three note chords, and get the full backing of the instrument, making it much easier to get quicker results. Okay, so this is more of a funky backing. Listen to the bass line in the background, just for me holding down a chord.
Okay, this is more of a Mantovani orchestral string sound. Okay, so if you want to learn a piano, then the digital pianos that you can get, I've got a selection of them to show you here. And they're all going to sound a little bit different, and they all have different facilities on offer. On the lower price models, you won't get the features like recording or the split keyboard facility. So you'll be more restricted to just playing it like a piano. And that's what you've got to bear in mind. All these digital pianos out there are trying to emulate a real piano. A real piano has one sound, it often goes out of tune and you just have to play it uh, both hands and doing all the work yourself. The beauty of the digital ones is you can record. You, you can use a recording section to uh, put one part into the memory, play it back while you play along with it. You can also mix sounds together, split the keyboard. So it makes it a far more interesting experience when you're learning to play. So the most portable instrument you can buy in the Yamaha range, that's a, digital piano is called the NP12 and there's a longer version NP32. The 12 has just five octaves like most keyboards where the 32 has 76 notes so it has a bigger range of keys nearer to that of a real piano only one octave shorter. Now it has a voice selection of 10 sounds but their keys are only half weighted so you're not going to get the same experience as a real piano and you're not going to get the same experience as the more expensive digital pianos. But you will get an experience like a piano. It's going to give you the resistance and it's going to gain that the harder you press the notes, the louder the volume will be and the brighter it will be. Now the beauty of the NP series is they don't weigh very much. So they're easy to move around. You can carry them to school or to university or on holiday and they can be easily uh, put under the bed or in a cupboard out of the way when you're not playing them. The disadvantage is the keys aren't quite as heavy as a standard digital piano or as a real piano. So again, when you go between those and a real piano for maybe your piano lessons, you will notice quite a difference. And if you get used to the NP as your main piano you're learning on and just go for a lesson for 45 minutes a week, the chances are you'll find the real piano quite hard work to play after being familiar with the portable lightweight piano. Let's have a listen to the NP. Okay, so half-weighted keys, 10 voices, two versions, the short five octave version or the 76 note NP32. Okay, next I want to show you the P45. This is by Yamaha again. It's got uh, 88 keys, the same as a real piano. Uh, a lot heavier than the MP series. This is 11.5 kilos. So it's a little bit heavier, but, but not unmanageable. And it gives you uh, stereo sound. It gives you 10 voices. Uh, the main disadvantage with this one is you've got to use a function button to select your sounds. So you hold down the function button and you press the key that corresponds to what you want the keyboard to do. You have built-in metronome, you can have a bell that rings on the first beat of the bar. It's got fully weighted keys so it does feel much more accurate to play. Let's have a listen to the P45. It's a great sound. The limitation on this model, in my opinion, is just not having no buttons. You've got to select things from a chart and work out what you're pressing uh, with the function button to get it to do the right 
uh, function for you. Okay, now the next model up in the price points is the Korg B2. The Korg B2 is a relatively new model from Korg. Korg are a very good uh, digital piano company. They make other instruments too, and they, uh, their pianos are very, very good. The Korg B2 is just above the price of the P45, but below the price of the P125. Has a good action, a uh, good range of uh, sounds, nice speakers. Let's have a listen to it compared to the, the P45. Now again on the B2, you've got to select voices using the, the sound button. So it's a little bit more complicated, um, but not something you won't get used to quite easily. And the sound is good. Um, it's the same sort of weight, 11.8 uh, kilos, so not much difference to the P45. Different brand, they've all got their own uh, sounds that they're going to be recording to produce their samples. And that's effectively what you're doing. When you play a note, you're playing a digital sample of a real piano being played. Uh, and the harder you press it, the sample will be a, a different sample with, where they press hard and get a brighter, louder tone. So that's the Korg B2. And next up is the Yamaha, the Yamaha P125. The P125, fantastic instrument, one of our best sellers in portable pianos. It's going to give you 24 voices. You can mix two voices together. You can uh, get a better speaker system. There's two smaller speakers additional to the two that the P45 gives you, so you get four speakers and that gives you a much better sound. Now one of the beauties for me on the P125 is you get a recording facility. Now we can record in the right hand. And then we can add the left hand to that. and then you can listen to them both played together, how you would sound if you played them both together. And it helps you with more syncopated pieces where you can uh, listen to one part, play along with it and keep practicing and hear how the two fit together before you try and play them all yourself. It's also good for uh, if you want to do some jazz improvisation or learn to play along with the music you've already played, you can record in both hands to one of your tracks and then you can improvise and play some um, cool jazz notes over the top or play along with some extra sounds. Um, maybe you play a piano piece and then you add some nice strings in and record them on the second track. And when they're both recorded, you can still play along. So it gives you the chance to build up your musicianship and play along with music that you've already put into the keyboard. That's the P125, a lovely instrument. Okay, so the top of the portable pianos I'm gonna show you today is the Yamaha P515. The beauty of the P515 is it has wooden keys, unlike the rest of the models I've shown you. So it's much more accurate to become a real piano because the keys are made of wood and they feel much more like the, the real action of a, of a real acoustic piano. The P515 has bigger speakers. It is a lot heavier, it's about 18 kilos, so it's going to be about another 6 or 7 kilos more than the P125 or the P45, but it does have a much bigger sound. The speakers are really, really good. It has the split facility, you can mix sounds, you can record, um, you can even use a USB stick to save your recordings and then put them into a computer to be maybe um, burnt onto a CD. The P515 has a lot more voices to select from and a graphic EQ to allow you to choose how bassy or trebly the sound is. So again, much more advanced and it will take you through a lot further through your playing life. Let's have a listen to the P515.
has a beautiful sound, lots of variations, and that wooden key touch makes it beautiful to play. And it's unlikely that you'll grow out of it because the facilities and the sound and the feel are very, very good. Okay, so we've looked at the digital portable pianos. There are lots of other ranges that um, Yamaha make. They make the Aria series, the CLPs, the CSPs, the CVPs, and the Avant Grands, which are all cabinet versions, all pieces of furniture. The ones I've looked at today are all portable, but you can buy wooden stands to make them more a sort of permanent feature in your home rather than something that you just put on the stand. And there are various stands that you can buy for these keyboards. Take a look at our stands. You've got the folding X stand. Now the portable pianos are better on a double X stand. Um, the double X stand has two crossbars, um, so much more sturdy with the two pivot points. And the double X stand is the portable stand that we would recommend. The alternative is the stand made for the piano um, by the manufacturer, and those are much more making it a piece of furniture and will be much more rigid. The difference is they screw onto the stand, so if you wanted to move the piano around, you might have to undo four screws to take it off and put it somewhere else. Okay, so on the pianos, I think the main thing to say is the more you spend, the longer it will last. If you're learning to play the piano, eventually you'll aspire to something very close to a real piano. And the more you spend, the better it's going to be. If you, if you go to the lower model straight away, that's fine, it will prove that you're wanting to continue, but I think that you'll wish you'd spent more money. So I would say my advice would be spend as much as you can, um, if you can, because it will take you a lot further, it will encourage you a lot more, and you won't grow out of it too soon. If you go up to the wooden key instrument, you probably won't ever want to change it, but something like the lower models, you might find that you want to upgrade it at some point. So it's just deciding how definite you are if you've already been playing for a while on a portable keyboard, then the digital pianos, uh, the more you spend, the better they'll be, and the more that you'll enjoy yourself playing, and the longer they'll last for you. Now the alternative is a portable keyboard. Keyboards are easier to play because your left hand is um, able to use the rhythm section and the accompaniments within the instrument. You can even get the backings of songs to play back that you join in with, so the experience is much easier and a much quicker way to learn to play and enjoy music. The portable instruments have a, a big selection of rhythms and styles in all types, from um, marches to swings to foxtrots to uh, disco to 90s rhythms to uh, funk to dance music. You've got the whole selection in there, and that means that they suit people of all ages, and you can find a style that will suit the song that you want to play. Now, you have a choice of either playing one note chords or three note chords, and you can add sevenths and things with extra notes, but it means that you can uh, play with ease and not have to play all the syncopated left hand that a pianist has to play. Let me give you some idea of the keyboards. So the cheapest of the Yamaha keyboards, the F51, is not touch sensitive. This is quite important when you're learning because putting the expression in, making it brighter or softer, louder or quieter, is a nice way to improve your playability. So the F51 is under £100, but it doesn't include touch sensitive keys. Still 61 notes, as is the uh, E373 and the E463. Now these two models have uh, recording facilities, they have a big choice of sounds, but the speakers on the 463 are much better, and it has six track recording, so you have a better facilities built into it and a better sound. So the E463 is the top of the five octave keyboards in the student range. So if you're looking for a keyboard with a longer range of keys, um, then the EWs will give you 76 notes nearer to that of a digital piano or a real piano, but they're not going to give you the weighted keys still. The more you spend on a keyboard, the better the sounds will be, the better the styles will be, and the more you can vary to make it suit your style of playing. From the PSR E series, you go up to the SX series, and Yamaha make the SX 600, 700, and 900. Now we have other videos that will explain these much better. These are uh, great instruments for experimenting. They have a lot more facilities, and the sounds of a very high caliber. Above the SX series, you've got the Genos, which is the top of the range, 
and again phenomenal sounds, much better samples of instruments and much more digital effects to make the sounds even better. Now there's one more instrument you might want to consider and this is a sort of hybrid. This is the portable piano on a stand, very good value for money because you get the wooden stand included um, and the main difference is it has the piano field keys but it also has all the accompaniments and all the recording facilities. You can even plug a microphone in and record your voice. So the DGX series are a very good crossover between portable pianos and keyboards in the way that you're getting all the rhythms, all the accompaniments, hundreds of sounds, the facility to record a microphone or plug a microphone in and hear it through the speakers and the chance to play on a full length 88 note instrument. So the DGX660 hybrid model actually includes the wooden stand and it includes the small square sustain pedal but you can buy the, the long three pedal unit to fit within the stand and um, that will give you the same experience as a grand piano. Okay, so the sustain pedal on the digital pianos is the same as the right hand pedal on a grand piano. If you look at the lower models, you get a sustain pedal included, but it's gonna be the little square pedal, a bit like a sewing machine pedal um, that you might use. So they do float around the floor and you can upgrade them for the more heavy based uh, sustain pedal, um, which you get actually free with the P515, but the lower models, it's an optional extra. You can buy the three pedal unit for the uh, P125 and for the P515, and that will give you the same experience as a grand piano with all three pedals. Not everybody wants to use those three pedals. The middle one is called Sostenuto, and there's only certain pieces of music that will really require that. The left hand pedal softens the tone, and the right hand pedal sustains or lengthens the note. And that's quite nice if you're going to mix pianos with strings or just want to have nice um, long sustained sounds. The sustain pedal is nice on a piano to give you that effect. So all these instruments will be fine to learn to play on. The difference is if your choice of style would be classical piano or jazz piano and you want to play uh, perhaps having piano lessons, the digital pianos will suit you much better. The difference is they won't give you the rhythm section and the backings that you'd be having with the portable keyboard. So the, the portable keyboards will make it a, probably a slightly more fun experience with less uh, effort because the backings are automatic and will help you to get a bigger sound with less effort. If you go to the portable pianos, uh, you will need to play your left hand a little bit more syncopated to play along with the right hand, but the overall experience will be nice and you'll get a good feeling of satisfaction as you play as a real pianist would play. The keys will be heavier, so you do have to play a little bit harder, press a little bit harder on the keys, and there's more resistance, just like a real piano, um, but you'll get the nice experience. There's something very tactile about the weighted keys on a real piano and on the portable instruments. So the choice is yours. Do you go for the piano that you can play properly, and if you go between a real piano for lessons, or a real piano at school, or somewhere where you've got a friend who's got one, then you'll be more familiar with the key feel from playing on your portable piano. Or you go for a portable keyboard that gives a little bit more fun, um, all the experience of the backings and the recording facilities, and um, it will make you sound much better than you probably are by using all the style accompaniments to enhance your playing. I hope you found this video useful. If you have any questions, you can put them in the comments section below or send us an email. There's a link to our website, ePianos, also below, epianos.co.uk, and we'd be pleased to help you by email, telephone, or live chat. We're, we're a business set up to help people. We're all players, and we want to give you help and advice, so anything you want to ask us about the different models, we'd be pleased to help you. I hope you found this video useful. Thank you for watching.